The quality of our mental health and well-being ebbs and flows. During periods of difficulty, many people resort to drug and substance use to cope. These behaviors can often become repetitive, causing the already vulnerable person at hand to develop dependencies and ultimately an addiction. It is important to understand addiction in its truest sense. It is a medical disorder, not a moral failing. Profound stigma surrounding poor mental health and addiction make it incredibly difficult for those struggling to seek help. Fear of judgment, social exclusivity, and a hindered capacity to function as they normally would due to poorly impacted physical and mental well-being are some of the most prominent barriers to reaching out for support. Moreover, there are innumerable barriers to receiving adequate addiction treatment, with foundational approaches often criminalizing substance use and stripping away patient autonomy. Offering holistic support to remedy this ongoing global health issue is absolutely necessary to protect the well-being of those suffering. Illegal drug or substance use has been on the rise in Canada, quickly manifesting into an epidemic of its own. A complex entanglement of factors has contributed to this, including the increasing contamination of the drug supply by fentanyl, among other synthetic harmful substances, overprescription of opioids or pain relievers by physicians and medical providers, and a deep-rooted dependency that forms as a result of a long-term treatment plan that includes opioid usage. It is important to recognize that the usage of opioids and other stimulants as a basis for medical treatment is incredibly risky. Many people become dependent on these painkillers and develop attachments that often end up in fatalities. Statistics indicate that approximately 44% of adults aged 55 and above have used a prescription opioid, of which 1.1% use them daily. Usage is very difficult to regulate, and as such, many people spiral into addiction. As of 2021, at least 19 people lose their lives to opioid overdoses every single day, and this number is likely grossly understated, which further proves the urgency of the situation. 94% of overdoses are accidental. Opioid users also often succumb to numerous health complications such as sedation, nausea, dizziness, tolerance, and respiratory depression. Regulating narcotic usage is incredibly difficult and attempting to overcome an addiction is even more mentally taxing due to the complex physiological effects that come with addiction interventions. Drug addiction is a persistent disease with the potential to continually relapse. The consumption of the drug leads to prominent and sometimes long-lasting behavioral changes. When individuals stop using drugs, problems that may arise can encompass anxiety, display of depression, and withdrawal symptoms. The physiological effects of withdrawal can be incredibly painful, causing around 80 to 90% of individuals to relapse back to drugs. However, with prolonged and consistent drug usage, it has been recognized that the brain will become altered and changes in motivation and learning responses have been witnessed in humans. When individuals with drug addictions attempt to abstain from using, it often becomes difficult to sustain due to the negative impacts they are dealing with. A study reports that individuals that are frequent drug users do not want to receive treatment. However, the reason behind the refusal is that the drugs have impacted neural circuits causing changes in self-awareness and emotional decisions. Interventions for the treatment of drug addiction include individual counseling, medications, and continual follow-up to keep consistent progress with patients. When going through the stages of withdrawal, medical professionals can aid individuals with both prescriptions and technological interventions with medical devices to aid with detoxification. Furthermore, in treatments, doctors can prescribe individuals with prescriptions that will diminish the cravings for drugs and help improve the damage the brain has gone through. For example, those with an addiction to opioids can take doses of methadone to help prevent relapse. Additionally, individuals may turn to receive help from Alcoholics Anonymous. However, this program may not be successful in helping individuals, as the program is linked to beliefs that may not be suitable for everyone. Although mental illness and drug addiction are often correlated, 
Individuals who have drug dependencies typically tend to receive more severe stigma than those with mental illness, likely because drug use is not seen as a medical condition, but rather an act of personal choice or moral failure. As a result, those who use drugs for personal interest can be considered more responsible for their state and more dangerous to society. The stigma associated with drug addiction is often usually structurally reinforced by the government policies contributing to its widespread acceptability. This drug stigma is incredibly problematic given that the stigma is a barrier to treatment seeking and community integration. Furthermore, stereotypes endorsed by healthcare professionals and researchers act as critical barriers to undertaking research involved with people with a history of drug addiction. In 1973, harm reduction was recommended by the 20th World Health Organization Expert Committee on Drug Dependence as an alternative to drug control. Throughout the mid-80s, harm reduction was adopted in many countries, including England and Australia. The harm reduction model is a set of practical strategies and ideas aimed at reducing negative consequences associated with drug use. Harm reduction provides people who use substances with a choice of how they will minimize harms through non-judgmental, non-coercive strategies in order to enhance skill and knowledge to live a safer, happier life. Examples of harm reduction include using a nicotine patch instead of smoking, consuming water while drinking alcohol, using substances in a safe environment with someone they trust, and needle exchange programs for those who inject drugs. Through implementation of these strategies, the harm reduction model has been shown to greatly reduce morbidity and mortality associated with drug use. In 2001, Portugal decriminalized all illicit substances and implemented harm reduction policies to help those with an addiction to drugs get treatment. After the laws were changed, the opioid epidemic leveled off and the country started seeing drops in addiction, HIV infection, overdose-related deaths, and even drug-related crime and incarceration. While the drug problem has not completely disappeared, their success in decriminalization of drugs can serve as a helpful model for other countries to implement. Canada and the United States have recently evaluated decriminalization of drugs as multiple provinces and states put motions forward to consider drug decriminalization legislation. In February of 2021, for example, the government of Canada tabled Bill C-22, which is a bill proposing to purge mandatory minimum penalties for multiple criminal offenses, including several of the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act drug supply offenses. Therefore, we might expect a change in the current laws on decriminalization of drugs in North America. The war on drugs across Southeast Asian countries like the Philippines, Indonesia, and Malaysia, all of which have adopted policies that largely center around punishment and retribution of drug usage, see the opposite effect in their population's abilities to regulate substance use and addiction. Death penalties, punitive measures, and forced rehabilitation are all strategies taken to enforce a strict no-drug policy. However, research conducted by neuroscientist Carl Hart from Columbia University concludes that these efforts are all in vain. Youth with substance use addictions become even more vulnerable to social exclusion, which tends to have an even more detrimental effect than addiction would. Criminalization and harsh discipline do not change substance abuse outcomes, but instead exacerbate the mental and physical wellness of those struggling to overcome addiction. Addiction is extremely difficult to navigate for individuals directly suffering as well as for their loved ones. Establishing gentle, non-compulsory treatment methods that safeguard patient agency and integrity is vital. Enacting harm reduction models as the basis for treatment across the nation may be the key to doing so, given that they provide a safe, controlled space with sterilized needles, naloxone kits, and medical personnel on hand to safely monitor drug usage and prevent fatalities. Patients do not need to be policed, but rather need genuine unwavering support. The onus is on us to give them what they deserve.